Good morning, everybody. How is everybody today? Good morning, good morning, good morning. And I had my uh, doing so many things at once. I can't remember if we said good morning from Janny. So we got with Shakti and Janny and Tom and Susan today. So on the agenda today, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Jason Meyer, and this is Morning Jumpstart, feedback for students. And on the agenda today, we're going to go over a couple of the still lives and the landscape. So uh, this should be fun, and I always run out of time. So I'm anxious to get going. Um, so this morning, the order will be Janny will be up first, and then we're going to do a uh, look at Shakti, and then we'll finish the show with Tom. Okay, and I hope you guys will stick around because... Um, there's some great points to be made here on all of these. There's always great points to be made, but um, we're getting into some really, really fun things that will can make a big difference. Sometimes it takes a little while to get the fundamentals down before we can um, before we can really make these things start shining. And when they start shining, that's when it's fun. So let's see if we can't turn the shine up on a few of these. And how can you see where I see? Well, there's our dance partner, a do si do. There we go. I need some fiddle music when we do that, huh? I have to look into getting some fiddle music. Some good old square dancing music. All right. So I need to get more in the habit of telling you guys how fantastic these are before we start jamming down the road I'm seeing such a huge difference in um, the structure of your paintings right you even from the beginning you, you you had the drawing and stuff now but now really structuring the value patterns I can see that it's, it's really coming into your work and I think your works getting much stronger for it so good good job um, and one of the things I see, and you can tell me whether you intended this or not, and it's very interesting. <laughs> yes, it is. Cindy and I actually talk about this all the time. That, um, oof. Yeah, how, how much you guys have developed. So, I'm getting a little emotional. <sighs> right? I mean, really, really, so beautiful. So on, I think it was Barbara's yesterday morning, we talked about how simply changing where we end can really, really change the feel of the whole thing. The feel of the whole thing. Man, you guys keep going. I'm going to feel bad saying anything about this. Wow. Janny, it looks like you're onto something. I'm not the only one seeing this. But, um, yeah, seeing you guys develop it, I, I do, I get a little emotional sometimes. It's, uh, it's fun. But, uh, let's be happy and keep going, huh? Let's be happy and keep going. Let's talk about movement and what movement means and how to control it. So, let's notice a few things here. So you've gotten a real nice sense of the value. I think you've got a nice sense of transition and everything. Again, this is a color study. This is a color study, so I'm using this as a jumping off point, okay? Because for a color study, fantastic A plus, I think, right? But uh, we wanna know what else we can do. We wanna know what else we can do. And when I highlight all that, you see those circles? Is it real clear, the order of everything? <laughs> I 
I'm praying it fair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a pregnant pair, and uh, I agree. Susan says, Janny, nice, so good in the suggestion of the figures in the background. I, I completely agree. She's done very little back there, and it's very effective. And that's, that's how kind of best to do the backgrounds, is how little can you do but still get that suggestion. All right, so I'm gonna take my big red marks off. I wanted those to marinate a little bit with you guys. And the reason I wanted to show you this is, is that's a completely different movement than we had yesterday. Right, and when I saw this, I thought, ooh, look how interesting that is. Because on that movement, not only did she manage to get these guys in, but instead of being, hey, look here, they became stop in the name of the law. Stop in the name of the law. And so in effect, what it does is it redirects them over there so just to do something different i'm going to play with this a little bit today and Janny, i apologize if this is not what you intended to do or if you intend to do something else because from here there's actually all kinds of ways we can go right for one i would suggest we either start here or we start here but I don't know that I would start in both places. Now again, is my order clear on a color study? No, I'm using this as an example of, of where we'd go next and how to clarify. Okay, so I don't want anybody thinking that I expect more than this out of a color study. Especially you, Janie. Fantastic. <clears throat> Um, and then the same with this and that, although this isn't bothering me, I'm going to make sure that all of this is shh, nice and quiet. We're going to stop our movement, stop them. But if we do it right, meaning if the shadow catches the light, it's not a full on stop. It's a redirection. Probably going to get let some air take care of some of that again to hold that light in. I'm going to reshape this pair stem to point the other direction. And and in this case, in this case, I think I'm going to try to start here. Reason being, why did I make that decision? So if we start there, we're going to have that. And if we start there, we're going to have that. That just feels like we're closing the door. It feels too close to the edge to me. It feels too steep. When I compare it to that okay we jumped in we jumped in re in a deep deep in here guys but again it's it's really not that difficult right look how clear that is w once you see it right once you see it So with those things in mind, because honestly, when you're at your level, uh, Janny, yeah, you can 
get a little bit better in this and a little bit better than that. But really what makes the biggest difference in, in the progress of the work is um, the idea of it. You know, the patterns and the orchestrating of those patterns like I'm talking about. All right, shall we see this? We got a nice active chat this morning. Nice active chat, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, so let's go for it. Let's go for it. Janie says yes. And I don't know if that's for that question or another one, but we're going to use it for that one, huh? Use what you got. <clears throat> so the next time around, I usually let this set up if I'm going to work on this anymore. Probably what I would do Probably what I'm going to do is watch, even as I just go, I can go very thinly around the edges. Right? I don't have to have that big dark that I always put in. But I'm just going to have a little bit here. And more than anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, take away a little bit of that activity that you're seeing there. And I just want you guys to notice, we've we got lots of comments, I think, um, well, it was yesterday morning, I think, when I took out the sides of the picture and blacked them out and how more intense it got. This is that same principle. This is that same principle. Again, since we're not coming down here. And I think already that's a lot more intense. Again, I'm not getting on Janny here. This is an awareness thing. This is an awareness thing. I mean, very, very little is done. And wow, the intensity went way up on that. Okay. So. So the other thing is, once we know what our dark shat, what our shadows are for, right? Make sure they get dark enough. Because what they're doing is they're stopping the light. They're stopping the movement. They're redirecting the movement, right? The shadows are like rocks in the river. And we want the, the light, the light, the water flowing over those rocks, the light running into those rocks, right? That's what makes, in my opinion, why you can sit on the edge of a creek or the edge of a river, right? At least I can. I can sit there for days, days. Assuming I can breathe under those conditions. Let's redirect that this way. Okay. And while we're there, I'm just going to reinforce the light here with the shadow on the stem. I want to reiterate. I'm not suggesting that she do all this on a little study. I just want to, again, show us how when we redirect the eye and the patterns here, how effective that's going to be. Um, let's take this bottom stem out. Okay, so this is a small thing, but on a table, again, I've been joking around calling um, tables 
interior landscapes. And I've been doing that for a reason. In a landscape, in order to get the breadth that we need, right, to make it look outdoors, often what we do is we do patterns. And those patterns, instead of going up like that, right, because that, sh that makes things shallow, what we do is try to go across, okay? So the same thing here is these colors, instead of going up, okay, you see, you see that color kind of go around and up and and I'm talking about that in particular. I, I know this seems like I'm being very, very, very picky. But again, this is just really a way of thinking more than anything else. Okay, it's a little way of thinking because what I want you to realize, what it's important to realize is, uh, Janie, you're a horse person. You're a horse person. So... I need you to realize that those are mountains. And between those mountains is atmosphere. And how do I know that? Because if you were to take your horse and go up, 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 up over that mountain and then down into that valley, and then you tried climbing up this mountain too, how many days is that going to take you? Or if they're little hills, it's probably going to take you hours, right? So if you think like that, if you think like that, then there's just no way that can happen. If we think like that, in order to express that, what we need to do is have our our colors and our bands go across. Okay, and then as I get lighter, grayer. Oops, too much. Well, anyway, to express it, that's a little too much. But again, just to kind of show you how effective it is. Because then what's happening is each of these grapes are going through this different strata. which makes the grape stand up off the table, which is the first step in it becoming three-dimensional. Okay, can you guys see that? Even with just those three right there, do you see how already that table's really laying down and we're going back into space? So that is simply a way of thinking, and what I mean by that, what I mean by that is that when you're thinking tabletop, anything on here, you're thinking landscape, so you're gonna, as much as possible, work across, work across, work across, right? Then when you have objects, those objects will go through multiple strata. And when they do that, when they do that, the table then lays down and the objects stand up. <coughs> so the table would lay down and then we need this pair to stand up. And then after the pair, we need that to continue that way, but we need that background to stand up to, in a sense. Okay, so what I'm talking about here is the actual structure of the space we're creating. Do you guys see? But again, it's you don't have to go to architecture school for this. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> so cool. Yeah, I see the lay down and stand up. Also, I was trying to get that green glow like David LaFell, but the pair just kept growing. Great. So let's talk about that next. So anyway, learn to work across and think that way. And again, at first you're like, what am I supposed to do this? But as you start to really understand that, it gives you control of the universe, total control of this universe. So she was trying to get the glow, which brings us back to our shadow, our shadow and our edges. So the first thing I want to do is if we want this pair to glow, well, we, we, first thing we need to do is make it solid so that that light can't pass through it. All right, so we wanna be nice and solid on that shadow down here. We wanna be solid. So the first thing to know is that shadow right there has almost more to do with the light and it looking lit than anything you do with the light. Can you see that? Can you see that? No? Okay, let's investigate this green grape. I'm not gonna touch this green grape at all. All I'm gonna do is make a definite shadow on the table and both the table and that green light, green green grape are gonna seem to become lit, okay? So again, I'm about to light this green grape without touching the light. You, can you guys see that both in front of and behind the shadow are now lit. Okay. And if it's not so, maybe that separation between the light and the dark needs to be a little bit more. Ooh, did those just get brighter? Did I just touch the, no, I didn't touch those at all. How am I going to make that light? No, I want that. I, I turn that, turn that dimmer switch up more light up there more light okay so the first step to know about shadow about light is shadow right and so if we're to understand shadow what is sh shadow is the absence of light so it's an antagonist it's got to be different than go against go against then the other place we need a hard edge is where this thing starts. I don't even know if you guys can see that. I need a hard edge where it starts. Get that highlight off the edge into the center. Another hard edge where that starts. And in order for a hard edge to be effective, we're gonna have to have some soft edges. Oops, oops-a-daisy. 
Whoops, a daisy. Right? And if I have a hard edge on my shadow, if my shadow really stands up and stops the light, then I can completely make all of this disappear here. And we can still have a solid pair. Okay, so part of the glow is the structure. And then the other part is the glow doesn't mean the value matches. Just for example, this isn't what we're gonna end up with, but if I wanted to, I could make that background yay dark and still let this thing glow. All right, and so I'm gonna do that by again, the hard part's the measure just ever so slightly right does that kind of shape say glow or does that say glow you see it's more It's more about the feeling of the bouncing off of the light, which has as much to do with the shape as it does the value. And we don't want it everywhere. We just want it at the brightest spot because we need constant change. I don't know how many of you guys got to see last night's Masterworks, but we looked at a guy who knew how to move color, right? He knew how to move color pretty incredibly. And that's what we need to know here, but also we need to think about the shape that that color's moving. So in other words, it's not one step here, right? Because does that look like a glow there to you? Does that look like a glow? Well, no, because have you ever seen a hard-edged glow? And what does a soft edge mean? Well, basically it means you take, right? Instead of driving the 1,500 miles in 24 hours, it means you take it easy. Maybe you take three days, maybe you take four days. Maybe you make a vacation out of it and take two weeks. So, so much of these things that you guys want to do are about the nature of the movement and the edges. Because how many colors do I have there? All right, quite a bit, but even down at this level, you can see it starts to feel like a glow. That was a hard edge there. We gotta take that out. You see that dark outline around? That's not, not helping. It's not helping. So what can I do? Oh, I don't wanna cut in with the dark. I need a hard edge. So I need to learn to handle my paintbrush. So that I can put the light paint over that so it's literally in front of it. Right, and that's how I'm gonna get that hard edge by making the material leave an edge 
but it's got to be the material of the pair over the material of the background. Okay, so I don't know if you followed all that. That was long-winded. I think I got lost. But anyway, what I was saying was darks and edges have as much to do with the sense of light, the look of light, right, as white paint and the value, light value, right? We have to quit disassociating the look of something being lit from our value of white or really light value. We can have dark things that look lit. Okay, I don't know if that helped. Yeah, I, look, oh, that's so helpful. And I don't know when that came up. Okay, uh, that's what I wanted to see. Okay, now I see, now I see. All right, good, 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 good. Let's take some of these arrows off. We got a before and after. So that, and then again, you don't have to go as dark as I went back there, but I just wanted to show you that it has more to do with the edge and the look. Again, the look, the look of what? The look of glow. And what did we say? Well, we say part of that is we need an edge for structure. And then glow is what? Bright and then darker, 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 dark. It's a falling off of the value, a falling off of the value. So this can be almost any value as long as we can fall off of it. Okay, so that's, the, that's glow more than anything. All right. Well, we're going to leave it there so I can keep going. But uh, again, if that's a different kind of, and if you end up going with that composition, probably what you're going to want to do is leave just a little echo back here, right? And the reason being is we wouldn't want the painting to stop right there. So, so instead of just bang, it would be like we kind of skipped and skidded and then came back, if that makes sense. Okay, that'll be for another time if we need more on that. But I hope you got some stuff out of that, Janny. You're doing great. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. All right. So um, this, obviously, they said we call it electric green. Um, in life, it's not like this. Okay. But we're going to work with what we have, and now we know. And so what do we need to do? What do we need to do? Okay. Katie. Hey, Katie. Glad you can join us and Wendy made it. Good, 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 good. You're very welcome, Jenny. You're very welcome. I hope lots of you guys got lots out of that. All right. So I basically love everything I'm seeing here now. <laughs> and very often my paintings will get to a stage like this. And it's just almost just like the glow of the last time. It's about walking off. All right. First, so first what we want to do is decide what our four steps are. Right. And our four steps should be right around here. Four steps what? Well, we're talking our four values. Number one, two, 
three, and four. Okay, so we want to set those up. We want to set those up. We're gonna, okay, you're gonna go to this part of the empire right here, and we, I want you to build a garrison, build a fort and a uh, supply garrison, and and then, uh, okay, I, I need you, I, I need you then to, uh, why don't we come over, come over here, and we're gonna build a garrison here, and you know, this this is this is all the the valuable stuff, so we're gonna protect that. And then inside the valuable stuff, we got the super valuable stuff. Okay, so after we've got these outposts set, right? So you can think of the four values as outposts. Then what are you gonna do between the outposts? You make trails, you make roads, you lay train tracks, you bus lines. And then finally, airplanes. You connect them. You connect them. Connect them. Connect them. Okay? So, at this point, we've got our four values down, but the connections are a little rough in some places. Connections are just a little rough. So, but again, I want to start with the importance, the importance. Oh, goodness, I can't believe it. I'm going to get in trouble for this. I'm going to get in trouble for this. But really, really and truly, the importance of evil, the importance of stopping, stopping the light. Because without a foil, without a foil, Hard edge, hard edge. Cast shadow with a hard edge. And part of it, so this is really good, but that's almost not enough shadow for a thin shadow. Because again, it's gotta be enough to interrupt, to stop the light. If that grape was Look just a little bit longer on those shadows sometimes. Right, but let him let him lay flat underneath those floating grapes. You see, so that's a big part of it. That's a big part of it. And then again, um, <clears throat> they were saying that in the in the actual painting, it's it's not this light and limey. And as we get in here, we see all kinds of greens, don't we? Right. So I see warm, some cool. Oh, did I put those down? I I can't remember. But look, I, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Now, do, do any of you guys remember when I start, started saying, you know, the problem with measure, the problem with measure is I need like, um, like three truckloads. Three truckloads. Right? Meaning that the measure difference would be that kind of quantity. And at least this is reading in the photograph. You're going to look in the painting. That difference, although it seems great when you're mixing it, is really about two shovels. So you're absolutely on the right idea here, but the measure between like your darkest and your great grayest, your richest middle, 
and your light is blanched can even be greater. I know that's hard to hear because I know you're pushing the limits right now. But I just, again, I, I want to show you. Show you. Push it a little bit more. Push it a little bit more, okay? Okay. So, should we work for a minute? How are we doing on time? I'm completely lost this morning. I'm completely lost this morning. Lost, lost, lost in the creative mind. So I hope you guys can hang on. Let's see, what happened to our shadow? We gotta get our shadow back. First things first. How does it go? That which matters least must never be at the mercy of that which matters most. Did I get that right? Something, something, something to that effect? And right in the structure of our house matters. Right? Like nice, nice curtains, a, a nice bath mat, a good wall color. Man, that can make a difference, but really? You want a nice solid foundation, nice sturdy walls, a roof that's not going to cave in before we think about any of that. So if we have that there, then I think sometimes what you'll be surprised too, as you learn to group these things, let's see what I want. <clears throat> And just a hint too, we prefer the warmer part of the spectrum. So if you can sneak this to a little bit warmer now, let's see. Look, look how much lighter that is in the background. All right, did you realize we had that much space there? So if we could get this job done with this value then that white is gonna pop. The colors will seem richer, they are richer, because there's not as much white in them. But we're gonna have to back up and make sure that it still reads like it's lit. But how do we do that? How do we do that? Do we know now that that's more? It's gonna be a certain amount of white, but again, that's more a bit about edges and how we control this paint, the sequence of the paint, the paint pattern. I know, me and my patterns. Surface touching pattern recognizer. That's what they used to call me. Jason, the surface touching pattern recognizer. I said, hey man, don't pick on me. And I went back to my patterns and ignored them. There we go, there we go, there we go. So part of that pattern is the release, the release of the green. Oops, whoopsie daisy. Let that turn under there too. Oops, did I do too much? We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Okay, you guys okay? Sorry, I get into my brain here and I literally don't know if it's been two seconds or 15 minutes. But hopefully you guys can deal with that. So you see how that released that green? But, but it, it's still not, well, you think it might have anything to do with the nature of that highlight?
So look how I'm using that highlight. I'm using the highlight, literally using the highlight paint, the paint on the edges of the highlight and pulling that paint into that other green and gray that I've laid down. Right? What am I doing here? What am I? Just breaking bread with the neighbors. Just breaking bread with the neighbors. Being neighborly. Right? I'm not throwing hams over the fence or anything like that. All right. I'm getting lost and trying to talk and paint. So that green that was way too much a second ago has lost its greenness, right? Do you see how much purity has been lost in that? But what has it gained? Right? See how I'm pulling that into the grain? So right look at the body of the pair versus the top of the pair and i'm showing you this to show you that it's this in between stuff it's how these pieces meet that really matters but in meeting these pieces they can't lose themselves. Meaning I need a soft edge on the inside of that shadow, but I need that shadow to hold. I need that shadow to hold. Yeah, we'll give them a hug, but they're not getting through. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Right, Jason, the surface touching sense maker. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so we got shadow, we got highlight, and we've got light. Um, so the truth is, the truth is, oh man, this is going to be hard, guys. Oof. Okay. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Okay. So we're going to have some hard truth here. The truth is nobody likes that. Nobody likes green. No, nobody, like, nobody likes green. So... A little bit of red and orange comes around and we're like uh, later dude peace out we're gonna go hang with these guys I know that's rude it, it almost feels bad to say out loud but it, it's just an internal prejudice that we have and since we're trying to sell this to other people with the same prejudice What we might do is take that color and take a little bit of that red orange out of it. Let's see what that does. Let's see. Anybody on board? Anybody on board? See what that does? Look how green that looks out there.
a little close to the shadow, isn't it? A little close to that shadow. How about that? Is that enough separation? Right, and again, look as I start taking over all of this orange that we all just love so much. Now that green has a chance. That green has a chance to shine. Okay, and the same is true with this tabletop. And since we want to go to that background, this tabletop, I'm going to keep less. Right, and if I keep my darks nice and solid, I may have to go put those back in. Do you guys see how much tighter that's framed? Then we can decide how we want to let go. Right? And I'm gonna, what I mean by let go is simply Maybe before I get to that green, whoops, I just want a little bit closer. And if it's still too abrupt, right? Also, what makes things not abrupt is soft edges. And then if it's still too abrupt, what might I do? Just what might I do? Well, maybe I'll go to that exact same value and just swing it over to green. And just influence this area a little more green. Right? And do you see how even without touching without touching that, it sits in there a little bit more appropriately than before? All right, am I being long-winded today? <sighs> I'm not feeling very linguistic. So with that said, let me suggest that all of this be grayed off. And I know it's a balance. We've been talking about warmth and everything. But you have to remember, you got to remember how everybody feels about that green. How everybody feels about that green. Now, if we're doing a sunset or something, right? Or if we got an orange down here, right? Or something, something really fiery, we can have a background like this. But with something like that green, you see how that feels better already? It doesn't have to be that dark. We can... Get this going in there too. But we just can't be that orange red because man, it's like our best friend. It just really is our best friend. We don't even realize it. But it makes sense, right? What's orange and red? It's fire. It's fire. Warmth. Yeah, does that help? And when we do that, can we see how strong this strong that yellow is?
Okay, so that's what I would do. And then, is it still too electric? Remember how much I grade that off? Remember how much I grade that off? Yeah, I think we've got to gray it off a little more. So it's usually about less and not about more. All right, so I hope that helped out. Again, we learned about how nobody really likes this green. So, you know, the people we have warm feelings from, we kind of have to remove them while we, we, we go through this audit. You know, just, uh, okay. I hope that makes sense. hope that makes sense. I know, a little bit crazy creative talk, but that's what you get sometimes. I know, she had to go to work early. All right, we'll talk to you later, Shakti. And let's see, Mr. Tom. Was Mr. Tom able to hold on? Was Mr. Tom able to hold on? I hope so. Because uh, this is a great one here. This is a great one, and I forget who I was talking with. Ah, oh, I think it was on Masterworks last night, and I think it was Susan. And we had yellow in the sky, and we were talking about how yellow right should recede. Does anybody know where I'm going with this? Does anybody see it? So we got our yellow green here and we have our blue green here, right? And even that's a little bit warm, but we go great, right? You see how the intensity of the chroma increases and goes towards yellow. Well, that's exactly the opposite of what we need, right? We need our yellow up front. So what will happen is We've got yellow, and then it disappears, and we're left with red, and then that disappears, and we're left with blue. Okay, so what would happen if we just reverse this one thing? Let's just reverse this one thing and see what happens. Okay, so we went down here. And we took this color. We definitely want to gray it off and leave the value right at where it's at. But yeah, we could still do that. Could does it need to be? So we want to give ourselves enough room here. So let's go over really to that blue green. I'm just worried about that chroma being too high. We'll see. We'll see. But let's go blue green back here. Then as we come forward, we get slightly richer, slightly darker, slightly warmer. And I know this is like way too much, right? Right, right. But let's just even see with this too much what this does. This is gonna be slightly bigger than that other one. Yeah, I feel like we're, our chroma's just, or our, yeah, our chroma's still just so high. There we go mixture mixture there I felt like there's too much yellow in that last one but it goes blue and then this feels like it's got some red in it some purple
Okay, now we can see that that blue that we started with back there is way too bright, right? So can we gray that off? Something like that. Okay, so I hope that helps. I hope that helps that little reversal just right like that. And then, um, you know, the same would go for those trees down there. And um, it, it's easy for this to happen, but we got reversed. We've got the yellow on the tree back there and then the blue on the tree that's closest to us. So if we took that blue tree, stuck it something a little, we got a hint of warmth to it. Right, and this is common too, when you were, you were trying to go dark, sometimes we mistake blue as darker and it can be, but you've got to remember that coldness acts like a wall. And although, you know, it's a wall, sometimes we want to catch the light more like a hug or stop it or redirect it, kind of like fencing or a barrier, but not wall like a jail cell, right? There's a, there's a difference there. A little bit of a difference there. All right. That's pretty warm there. That looks, li but I may get a little bit of this here, and then I can put just a bit of green over that, and it'll look appropriate. But if I start with green, sometimes it's just too much, right? That green we need it. I said the other day that every green you have should have have a modicum of of red in it. I'm going too far. And what am I doing here? And this is how easy this is. Did you guys see what I'm doing? I'm killing this painting. How am I killing this painting? Killing the painting by working like that. Now, yeah, that may be what I want to do, but I can't work like that. I've got to work just like I said on that interior tabletop. I've got to work across. And so I've got to step back. And I know this value is wrong, but again, do you guys see the difference there? Okay. Um, I think some of these edges are a little too soft. A little too soft. Give us some silhouettes. And then when we need it to not attract attention how we do that like if we wanted this tree to let go we'll simply make it a shape that nobody's going to look at okay um same thing down here if we needed this to let go we just simplify these shapes a little bit Okay, um, the white, yeah, and then we want that white cloud to really show up. So how are we gonna do that? Can 
can we get away with some of this up here before we go gray Then we could have a gray that's got to be darker than the blue because it's gray clouds, right? And again, that's that movement. <laughs> ah, Cindy, you're so good, girl. So good, so good. Right, grain it. We could add some warmth in here. But again, if we're wanting to look at this, we need to avoid yellow and red and because we want to look at that. So we're gonna to have to make sure that those are those are gray. And it looked gray, didn't it, until we actually get gray on here. Maybe the bottom of those clouds could be a little bit flatter I don't know I don't know and again I I it may seem like I'm being rough here but um, these are color studies and I'm just using them as jumping off points almost more as a chance for me to illustrate some of these things we've been talking about and illustrate how they can affect your work Right, again, working across trees, across grapes. Then we can get a little bit more. And then the same thing is down here. And I know we, you know, we could be seeing green sky, but it's always best to have some dirty horizon there unless you're seeing that darker blue sky. So a little bit warmer, a little bit darker, a little bit grungier, not a lot. But the other thing that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you, as you come out of this, for that sky to look green without being too green. Without it being too green. Let's see, what are we doing here? Cooling this off. Yeah, so like this gray green. So you could see this could be pure sky or this could be the, the hills, depending on what you wanted, right? For the hills, what would you do? Well, I might go slightly darker than that slightly darker than that. And then does everybody see what we have to do from here to finish up? Let's do this to finish up. All right, gray and cool to horizon there. And then we can put the, the sun and everything on here. But again, we wanna get, we don't wanna go orange, white, green, we're getting a little too much going. Getting a little too much going. So how does that affect everything? Okay. Again, part of what's happening here, and this is hard to kind of get, it was hard for me to get my head around, is we kind of have an indoor thing, an interior, a still life kind of lighting and setup here, right? Rather than again, that broader, broader, right? And when we're broad and that's horizon, this, there's a certain amount of grayness and everything there, right? So, and I think once we learn to set these things up, what happens is we can get them to focus there without having to use yellow and you know these these strong colors the strong blue green and the strong orange and all of that right because ultimately some of that's stealing from that and it's stealing 
from that before it's got out of bed in the morning, before we've really woken it up. So there's, it's got nothing. So anyway, anyway, I feel like I'm kind of mumbling now. But I hope that makes sense. And then where do we go from here? Well, we go to working this dark mass. Like, do you guys see that? That isn't a bunch of trees. It's one single dark shape. Right? And so what we need to do with the dark shape is the same sort of thing we did here on the grass. Even though this grass, this flump is a single shape, we need to make sure that shape moves, right? So certain shapes will move, certain shapes will hold, right? And so it's the balance last thing we'll say here this is it's the balance of movement and hold okay for whatever that's worth I hope some of you guys out there could understand and grasp that I know we were a little bit in the deep end today, but I guess that's just where I ended up this morning. But once you guys get as good as you're getting, that's the only place left, left to go, right? That's the only place left to go because we got to grow and grow and grow. <clears throat> All right, so um, do me a favor. Let me know if this works out or let me know if you just watched a crazy guy for an hour and 15 minutes because I want to make sure that we connect and that you guys are getting as much as you can get out of this as much as I enjoy being creative and everything unless you're catching what I'm given there's a problem we got to hook up we got to hook up okay let's see where are we going we got a dosey -si dough -si we got a dosey -si dough -si I hope you guys have a chance to work today and I hope that did not paralyze you. But again, it's almost more of awareness than a technique. It's just slowly becoming aware of all these little things that make such a big difference in our work. Okay, and once you do, you'll realize it's not the physical time and effort in the paint. You know, there's a little bit of that but more and more it's clarity of thought and clarity of vision. Not the vision of detail, but the vision of the big pieces, the movements, the possibilities. Okay, everybody have a great day. Thank you so much for your attention. And um, where are we at? Are we Thursday? So there's Sketch Club tonight at seven o'clock on Facebook. Then tomorrow morning, uh, we'll look at our color studies for the class, and if there's time, we'll talk about starting our painting. All right, we'll see everybody. See everybody tomorrow. Okay, he says, I've never heard it, these lessons anywhere else. Well, I guess you're calling them lessons, so I guess that means it's a good thing. Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I wonder. But seeing you guys' as improvements, that keeps me going. That keeps me going. Improvement, Claudia. Yeah, Claudia. I hope you had your listening ears on. A lot of those subtle movements will do it, girl. A lot of those subtle movements. All right. <laughs> so fantastic lessons. It's like six months learning wrapped up in an hour. Yeah, maybe a little intense. I think I was born that way. I think I was born that way. But it's done with love. Take what you can, leave the rest, and we'll come back and do it again and again and again. Thank you, everybody. Bye.